So we have three fabulous readers reading today. And so we're going to start off with Ronald Sergian. So, Ronald Sergian received his MFA from California State University, Fresno. His poems have appeared in Australian Book Review, Colin Stack Review, Prairie Schwimmer, um, Rhino, Salamander, and others. His first full-length collection, Breath Fire, is, coming, is forthcoming to him last, um, in the late summer of 2018. Um, he resides in a small farming community with his wife and two daughters. We are pleased to have you. Please let's welcome Ronald Sarandian. <laughs> minutes, but that's just going to be one poem. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm totally serious. <laughs> just kidding. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to start with a poem that's in the booklet that we made for tonight. Um, I just want to say that I'm extremely honored and proud to be a part of this. And I know that uh, the Creative Writing Alumni Association is going to make this happen every year because I know that writers from the uh, from Fresno State uh, MFA program will have an abundance of books published every year and they have been and will continue to do so. Um, my book's not available yet, but it will be. and. Uh, if you want to reserve a copy, you can sign up for one in the back, and I'll be sending it out to you when it comes. And Marisol and Stephen, I mean that to be reading with you too is 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 awesome. Thank you. Summer ends each morning. And this is written for my my grandfather. Wake with one slipper under the sheets, with a shirt on backwards. Wake again to reject the possibility of not waking. Give your wife a kiss on the lips before pulling yourself out of bed. Kiss her the way the husband kisses his wife, though sometimes she is your mother. Hold the wall beneath your portrait and move one foot in front of the bare other. You will not remember your dreams. You will not remember your breakfast. You do, however, see the scrub jay perched on the persimmon tree as you drink your coffee and await the right season. I wanted to read this next one, especially since our daughters are here tonight. We had a fox living in our backyard for a while. Um, and, and her name is Joyce. So this poem's about Joyce. We name the fox. The fox gathers spiders from beneath, between rosebush thorns from beneath the bottom fence rail into her lean jaws. She is ready to give milk. We name her Joyce. Our girls run to the east side of the house, then the west, hunting views. I call her name, and she looks up, listens, looks between the carport gate and the black trash bin. She processes an object divide. She preens air almost motionlessly. If I were to define this stillness, I would do so in silence.
my mom used to live with my aunt up uh, near Kings Canyon National Forest. And uh, we go visit them often. My aunt still lives up there. Um, not as often as we'd like, but as often as possible. And so when the rough fire occurred, I'm assuming you're all familiar with uh, the rough fire. Um, it was a big deal for me. And when they, when they announced the name of the fire, I was like, that's so good. I have to steal that. My wife totally agreed. In fact, I think it was your idea. Um, so this poem is written in response to that, and it's what inspired me to name the book uh, Rough Fire. Rough Fire. Dry weeds spark, logs, red, brown, blue oaks, mice, squirrel, hog, all fold into flame. A mountain lion at the pool behind a tracked home startles an elderly woman into throes of cardiac arrest. After swarms of hummingbirds leave feeders dry, after the buckeye has dropped its fruit, after my hands close the book and I drain the water bottle, the wind chimes, song rises again, with meat bees coveting the untended bowl of dog food. The sun dries the fluids, preserves the meat. Maybe that is it, the thing turkey vultures circle this August as the hills ignite. On a Thursday morning, the road wakes to the wheels of garbage men. The road that leads out of this town is thin. It traverses full canals on its way toward other small towns. On Thursday morning, when the garbage truck heaves its load into its back, August air pauses, stills all objects. Trucks loaded with waste, tractor equipment or fruit, press on the hot asphalt. And here in this room, I feel the foundation vibrate with engine strain, flare of brake, the weight of mechanical grasp. At this moment, the mailman drops coupons through our slot. He walks off over dry lawn, steps on the spot where a mockingbird pulled worm from earth the day before. I watched from my dining room, sun inching in, coffee hot as August. Thursday mornings like this are glistening with barberry thorn. Curled arms of steam fern collect light on each margin. Steam catches yellow in diminutive bulbs. Cars carry retired couples to wherever they go so early. And the road is tired, small, and broken. It seems to you that not much happens here. You, who sees the same thing every Thursday morning, traverses each detail so frequently the canals fill and empty without testimony. The garbage trucks vibrate your floors weekly. The empty alleyways fill with light when birds wake before the hot hours. The schedule keeps. This next poem is uh, written for my brother who's here with those two noisy kids over there. <laughs> um, this is called Two Brothers in the Woods When the Bees Have Left. We dig our hands into the fallen pine, wet, moss covered and cobwebbed. The pieces fall apart. The pearl yellow termites pour out, 
legs that seem supple and translucent in the timber-scattered light carry their tracks across our forearms. We shake them off like almond blossoms. We dig, gather pulp beneath fingernails. My brother pulls back a shield of bark. A knot unplugs the damp black. Gold bleeds out. Our palms cup the honey. Floating wax sinks and turns in the shallow amber we bring to our lips. The crickets go silent. The pines stand still and we drink. One of the themes that runs through this book is memory loss. Uh, I did a lot of thinking about Alzheimer's during the writing of this. Um, so you'll see or hear this uh, recur. This is called This Side of Paradise. I fear memory loss like anyone. I fear subconsciousness skipping out mid-sentence. In conversation, I drift out toward the oak tree that appeared in a poem I wrote the previous week. It is there, right in front of me, when I thought I had only imagined it. A crow, open-beaked, dry-tongued, shines, oil-slicked and hungry. Will this memory recall itself later when I try writing about my grandfather awaiting chicken fried steak prepped for Father's Day dinner in the Alzheimer's facility? Maybe. Held, tilt up in recognition, then recognition gone. I want to hold my grandfather's face in my hands, speak to him with words that cut out, blink out, speak in the language of forgetfulness. I fear cupping his cheek to feel the shade escaped from morning rites. I fear my own rituals gone one day, my wife holding my face above bathtub water, eyes black as every part crow. I made the mistake of checking what time it was when I started. Are we good? Yeah, you're good. That's good. Okay. This is written for my wife. If you want to steal it and put it in a Valentine's card, it's on <laughs> the Academy of American Poets website. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Our California. Backyards filled with pallets piles of dry timber, pools unswimmed and dusty, trailers parked in clusters of downy weeds. All of this is reflected in the freckle on the white of your eye. Our fingers trace each other's fingers as we watch mockingbirds swoop after hawks. We make our bed from eight hay bales so that we may sleep in vineyards stinking of raisins. We collect our mini beads of sweat and drink, smiling by the river. Two more. This one's called The Carbon Footprint of a Rattlesnake. My mother, stepbrother, stepfather, raised tents at the low camp by the slow lapping wakes of Pine Flat Lake. Anchor holds the small aluminum boat close, its shell thumping quiet against the mud. Speedboat engines echo the coves. We do not see them. I'm thinking about the creek at Mineral King, where orange salamanders once leapt across my six-year-old fingers. 
I sit, sweating on the shore. My little brother wades out, water soaks his diaper. His little hands slap the silt clouds. The dim mountains shudder at the jolt of a gunshot. We look back. My stepfather holds the headless rattler. Its thick body tightens in a death curl. The fire is stoked, and though the coals are not yet red, and the sun has not set, the long body is skinned, gutted, and splayed out. The tips of ribs blacken. Neck opens wide its mouth. Light pink, almost white. Charcoal kissed, darkening. Moisture rises to the surface of each muscle's thread, cold blood hot now. The day rolls over. Poisons, tiny needle bones, pull from the small body. There is something about the smell of burnt meat, black pepper, gasoline in lake water. Anybody watch comedians in cars getting coffee with Jerry Seinfeld? Um, <clears throat> there was an episode where Norm MacDonald is talking to Jerry Seinfeld. He's the guest that day. And Norm MacDonald's son is into poetry, or something like that. I think that's how it goes. And Jerry Seinfeld said that poetry is basically stand-up comedy, but without a punchline. <laughs> no punchlines here. <laughs> Waking to watch accidents on YouTube. I turn it off after five minutes. That is a lie. I keep it on to keep eye on the cop falling over a fence the Land Rover mowing down motorcyclists, the sun-blind captain falling between two boats. I think about the Starlings, a 20-minute drive away, screaming across the Costco parking lot, and I stare. I stay to watch a fake megalodon nudge a great white shark, a baby who trips over and over and over a Tonka truck to end up headfirst in a pond of white ducklings. I stop to eat yogurt, drink coffee outside, watch our old dog piss on the frost, stop in my robe to contemplate returning to the search engine to type great poets in their own words to redeem and watch W.H. Auden spill a thousand drinks down the front of his shirt to stifle and keep my mouth from swallowing itself as Anne Sexton falls down a flight of stairs laughing. Thank you. <laughs>